Hello there, this video is all about how you can get your first 10 coaching clients. I'm gonna reveal pretty much everything right here, right now, and you'll be happy to know there isn't any upsell or anything like that. If at any point you think, hey, you know what, this guy's pretty cool, I like what he says, then I've got a little link in the description below, and it goes straight to my Facebook group where I've got loads more information to share with you. So please click on that link and I'll see you in my Facebook group. So why am I making this video? Well, for more than 10 years now, I've been working with coaches, instructors, and trainers. And if there is one commonality, the vast majority of coaches, instructors, and trainers don't like sales, don't like marketing, and just wanna really get on with the job of doing their coaching, okay? And you probably agree with that. So here are a few issues that you, uh, that you may have in your business right now, and then we'll get into the good stuff. So pricing, that can be an issue. How to find clients, how to meet people, how to get, get people onto discovery calls. Getting people from discovery calls into actually buying your services and not just buying a one-off service from you, like a one-off session, but continued sessions. They are the main issues. They're not all the issues, but they're, they're the main issues for sales and marketing for coaches. So if you've got any of those issues, you really want to listen to this because I'm gonna dive in and cut out a lot of the rubbish for you and just make life simple because you've got a coaching practice and you want to crack on with that, so let me help you. A little bit about me, less than 30 seconds. So I've been working with coaches, trainers, and instructors since about 2007. And until I sold my business in 2019, I was number one in my niche. So I know what I'm talking about. And here's another massive thing for you as well, which you're gonna love. I hardly spend any money on ads, hardly anything at all. I know times change, but what I wanna share with you right now is how you can do the same because I know that lots of coaches, what they'll do, they'll create a Facebook group, for example, and then they'll boost a post or put some ads in and you get nothing in return. Or you do a lead magnet, you know, where you're gonna give something away for free, let's say discovery call away for free or a book or a, a webinar or what have you not, and hardly anybody joins. So my first request of you is please, Stop spending money on ads right now, okay? Because for the vast majority of single operator uh, coaches, you don't need to spend money on ads if you do this properly, okay? So <clears throat> that's gonna save you a fortune. So if you're not gonna spend money on ads, how on earth are you gonna get people coming to you? That's the question that you're probably thinking about right now, okay? So, it starts with this. First of all, what sort of coach are you? Now you could be a life coach, you could be a relationship coach, a career coach, whatever. What we really need to do is to take that coaching element and then sprinkle it down, make it smaller. People call it about being in a niche. Now a lot of people go, I don't wanna be in a niche, David. I wanna help lots of different types of people. That might be you. Or you might fear that your niche is too small. Well, I can tell you for the last 10, 12 years, my niche had a maximum of 39,000 people in it, and I did very well, thank you very much. So don't worry about slimming down your niche. And if you stick to one niche and concentrate on that niche and you took their language, you will get other people coming in from the side wanting to work with you anyway, because you'll tick seven or eight of their boxes, you know? So, <clears throat> find a group of people that you really want to work with. So let's say that you are a dating coach. I have a very good friend, his name's Des, Des O'Connor, and he is a dating coach, dating and relationships coach, but he concentrates working with English black women, okay? So he's starting to find a bit of a niche there. But then what he does, and what you can do, let's say you're a life coach, and you want to work with, um, parents with teenagers who are in trouble. Once you've found the area of the type of person that you wanna work with, it doesn't stop there, okay? That's the beginning of creating your niche for you. This is the beginning of how to find clients to come towards you. What you then need to do is you then need to realize and understand all the problems that they have and then use their language to describe it. 
because the way that I would describe something could be totally different to the way that an, a group describes something. They could use different language, different words, different terminology, different acronyms. They could have different pain points. So what you need to do is go, right, okay, so I'm a life coach and mm, I might want to work with five different types of groups of people, but I'm just going to concentrate on one at the moment. And that one is I'm going to be supporting uh, parents who have troublesome teens. Okay, so right, what are the pain points? We need to get out there and find out what the issues are. Now, you've probably got a really, really good idea, which is great. But then what we need to do, and you, you, you can start doing what we call um, primary observation, primary research. And you can go into Google and you go into these different uh, forums. And you can find forums on, um, on, on social media, such as Facebook or things like Yahoo Answers or Quora. And, and look at the things that people are saying about that subject and find out what they're struggling from and look at the language that they're using that is really really important because this is how you're going to start to communicate with those people moving on in the future okay my next big thing for you is this you got to see this as a long-term plan this is not a quick hit okay if you see this as a quick hit it's gonna fall down, I promise you, because you'll just be chasing clients and chasing clients and losing clients and you'll be lowering prices. It's not the way to do it. Now, I appreciate that every, not everybody can look for the long term, but what is your longest period of time? If it's only three months ahead, okay, let's plan for three months. If it's two years, let's plan and work for two years, okay. So, what I did, really really successfully and I've done this on three occasions okay um, the the first occasion in my niche I had around about 5,000 people in my social media group it's a Facebook group and that's out of a niche of 39,000 okay something like 14% or something like that of the niche phenomenal what I did is I got talking in other groups, I, I, I got talking to people, and I said, look, what about this problem, what about that problem, and I invited people into this group, um, and we got talking, and I got them talking. It was almost like a gripe, a place to have a gripe. It was almost like that. Come in here and have a gripe. Now, the niche I was working with were actually driving instructors, a, a different type of coaching and instructing, and they had lots of gripes. They were um, single operators, they were working out um, uh, of their car all day, and they had lots of stories to tell, and they just wanted to come home at night and speak to somebody about those stories, and that's what they did. They used my Facebook group for it. And, and that created a platform for where I could start to offer my products at a later date. I then I've created a second group for a sports interest, uh, my football club, Nottingham Forest. Um, they're a, uh, a British uh, soccer football team and inside three months I grew the group to 3,000 people just I wanted to test it see if I could do that and I passed it on because it's not really what I want to get involved in in terms of making money but I wanted to know could I make a group again and I did 3,000 people in three months is pretty good <laughs> So my current group is called Niche Marketing Hero, and in the last four weeks, I've grown it from 150 people to 550 people without spending any money on ads. How did I do that? Well, the best thing for you to understand how I did that is actually by joining the group and having a look yourself. But what I did is I invited coaches into the group and I said, hey, what are your issues? And what, some of their issues were, we don't know how to present, we don't know how to increase our network, uh, we don't know how to recruit new people, I'm lacking in this skill base area. So I said, well, how about I create something called Speakers Week? And they said, what's that? And I said, well, you deliver your presentation inside my group. I'm not gonna charge you, it's for free. Other people will be able to see it, you'll be able to expand your network, you'll be able to talk to other people. And all of a sudden it went poof, like this. I went from 150 people to like 550 people in just four weeks, five weeks. So that's a growth of 100 people a week without spending any money on advertising. So why am I doing this? Well, the reason why I'm doing this is very, very simple. Is I am creating relationships with people. I am not selling to people. I'm not saying, hey, this is your problem. I can solve it. 
I'm not saying you must attend this webinar. I'm not even doing lead magnets. I'm not, I'm not sure if you know what a lead magnet is, but it's where you offer something for free and in return you normally get their email address. The reason why I'm not doing that is because we see that all the time as consumers and we know that we're gonna get sold to. And I don't wanna to sell to people. I want people to naturally gravitate to me and say, hey David, I recognize that you're a business coach and I recognize that you help coaches build their businesses. I've got this problem, can we talk? And that is what I do. I sit myself in the group, people know who I am, they know what I do, and I bring in a range of information into the group, but I never teach. In fact, I do two things. One, I never teach about my subject, because as soon as I start teaching about my subject, people don't need me, because they can do it themselves. What I do though, is I make them aware of certain things. Now, if they wanna go away and do their research or invest in somebody else, that's fine. But I bring awareness into the situation. And then if they wanna to come to me, cool. The other thing that I do is I do teach, but it's not me that's teaching, and it's not about a subject that I cover. So what do I do? I'm a business coach. I, I, I wanna help you grow your business. What, do I, what have I had people coming in and, and speaking in the group? They spoke about confidence, they spoke about leadership, and they spoke about resilience, they spoke about presentation, they spoke about um, clarity of voice, and all these other range of things. And maybe some of them could help them network and bring a few clients in and what have you not, but they are not accurately described as a business coach like I am. So I'm bringing in all this other information and people know exactly what I'm doing. I've told them, I said, hey, you know what? I'm trying to grow this group. Um, I want you to work with me when the time's right for you. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in lots of other different types of information. And people are going, ah, oh, David, this is a great group. I really love it. The, the, the feeling's nice. I like what's happening in this group. And they want to contribute and they are adding their friends into the group as well. As a consequence of that, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting messages saying, hey David, I've got this problem in my business. And it's very interesting because I find that, um, and this is gonna be really cool for you as well if you're worried about your niche. I find that many coaches don't just do, run a coaching practice. They tend to run a second business as well. Not all, but I would say around about 20% of people that have contacted me say, David, I do this coaching practice, but I also do this as well. Can I have a chat with you about it? And that's what we do. We have a conversation. Um, I call it a solutions call because I'm there to give solutions. They don't have to sign up to me or buy from me. The way I am building this is that they buy from me through relationship and confidence because they know what I can do. And I keep on giving as well. I keep on giving them stuff. So I gave them the opportunity to present. I gave them the opportunity to watch these presentations. Um, for some of the presentations I'm putting on YouTube and some of those people are actually um, SEOing it so they can get more views and things like that, which is really cool and it's a give, give, give situation. Then there's a point where they go, hey David, um, there's this whole area of business over here that I can't help, I can't do. I've been listening to your, been listening to your stuff and I've been trying to do it by myself but it's not working or I've worked with another coach or I've bought some books and it's not working. Can I work with you? So we create this solutions call which is really cool. And I, I go through that solutions call with them, I listen to them and then I say, well look, there's an issue here, there's an issue here and there's an issue here. I actually ask the people, I say, look, what do you think your issues are in your business? And, and, and usually they'll say A, B and C. So I let them tell me about A, B and C and I'm making my notes. But some of those issues may be correct but some of those issues usually aren't. So for example, they might say I've got an issue X and they're trying to firefight to put out issue X, but they don't understand why issue X is arising. So for example, they might say, hey David, you know what? Um, I'm just not very good at selling. And this is actually, I had, <laughs> I had this conversation twice yesterday. I'm not very good at selling. I'm good at getting people on discovery calls, but I need to learn how to sell. So I said to these people, okay, um, can I pretend I'm one of your prospects and we're gonna do a discovery call and you're the coach and I'm the prospect? And they went, yeah. And I said, okay, what's my problem? So they told me my problem and then I pretended to phone them up 
and uh, I elaborated on my problem. And then what they proceeded to do is tell me how to fix it. And I was able to pinpoint them straight away and say, look, this is not a question of you don't know how to sell. This is a question of actually what you're doing is you're curing people and you're giving people the, people the tools to try uh, to fix their issue. And then they'll go away without paying you and they'll do one of two things. The first thing they'll do is they'll try and fix their issue themselves and if it works, they'll never need you. The second thing they'll do is they'll try and fix their issue and if it doesn't work, they'll go, well, it didn't really work with that person, so why buy from them? So that is what I do. People tell me their problems and I look at it and I dissect it. And sometimes I can just give them immediate answers and say, this is all you need to do, go and sort it out. And I don't get paid, but that's cool because you know immediate answers, I'm not looking for that sort of relationship in my business. I'm looking for long, longer term relationships where we can build our businesses together, which is awesome. So then what I do is I go through, I listen to their issues and I pinpoint where they are going wrong. And I ask them to prioritize, okay, so these are the issues that we can see globally. Um, what do you think is your, your biggest issue? And if they get it wrong, <laughs> I guide them because I know what their biggest issue is once they've told me as long as they've told me everything I will know what their biggest issue is I said you need to work on this first okay and this is what we've done before so I go through that and then I give them opportunities for some solutions one you know put the phone down go away think about it do whatever you want to do that's solution number one be your own person have a great life and just be aware of the situations in your business and go out and solve them the second one is to work with me in some way shape or form and by creating a business model like that and i'm just going to summarize this i've been extremely extremely successful for the last 12 years i've done diy marketing what do i mean by diy marketing i've created websites i've created funnels i've done search engine search engine optimization then you know i've been the um uh, the wingman, the wingman, I can't get the words out. I've worked in their business, you know, I've guided them, I've told them where to go, I've shown them how to do it, I've been the consultant, where I've actually done some of that work for them as well. So let me summarize this and bring it all back together because the title of this was all about how can you get your first 10 clients into your business? Well, remember, it starts off with really knowing who your audience are. If you're going of the head of life coach, it's too broad. Think of a group of people that you wanna work with, okay? From that group of people, go and find out what their pain points are, the things that they're going through in their life, and the language that they use. And go and start talking to these people. That, it has to start there. It has to start with a conversation. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll, they'll create a funnel, they'll put some Facebook ads to it, or they'll run out and go on stage, and they'll want to jump 10 spaces in front and go, right, okay, I'm a relationship coach right now, pay me, and I'll sort your problem out. And while that sounds great, if you actually look at all the big name coaches, they never started out like that. If you do a little bit of digging and you look at your medium name coaches, they never started out like that. If you look at your local small companies who've been going around for a few years and doing well, they never started out like that. The way they started out was working with a tight knit group of a few people. So I, I initially started with around about 100 to 150, then I've expanded that to about 500. And those people know me really well. They know who I am, they know what I do, I know what I can provide, they, they know what I can provide for them, and they're happy to see me as a person that keeps on giving, giving, and giving, and giving. And out of that group of 500, let's just say 1% want to work with me. That's five people, that's fantastic. So 2%, that's 10 people, and all of a sudden you've got your 10 coaches there. Honest with you, the percentage is much higher than that okay so then you have to start modeling your business in a way so you can cater for everybody and so that you can grow and scale your business in the way that you want to but it has to start off with those initial conversations who are you what are your issues why does it happen like that listen to them okay invite them into your group you know that group could all, all that group can be about having a gripe 
So I have a client and uh, his name is Jeremy. He's a really, really nice guy. And he helps what we call in England real estate agents. And I think in America and Canada, it's pronounced, is it realtors or realtors? <laughs> People that sell homes and um, rent homes out. And he said, David, I'm really struggling how to do this. Um, I get people looking at me, but they're not really taking any notice. And I said to him, I said, look, there's a ton of people like you out there. Just like there's a ton of life coaches or a ton of relationship coaches or, or whatever, you know, there's a ton of you. What you need to do is you need to create a place where people can get things off their chest, have a gripe, have a chat, have a talk. He went, all right, okay, I'll give it a go. And he did that and all of a sudden, things started to change, right? They started to change up and people started to pay more attention to him. And that's what I've been doing for the last 12, 13 years. Was it 2007, 2008? That sort of period of time when I started doing that sort of thing and it's always worked for me. It's always worked, worked for me for a, um, to a treat. And I don't, sometimes I spend money on ads um, because I just want to test something and sometimes I have an urge to go and spend $100 on ads just to see how it works and what have you not. But more often or not, the right thing to do is to keep on going out there, creating those relationships, bring, bringing people into your group, giving them a reason to be in that group. And, and they start to get exposed to you. They start to, get, they start to get used to you. And it's a little bit like living in a village or live, uh, um, you know, go home and you live in a village or a small community and you know, block of apartment, you know, an, an apartment block or what have you not, and you know your neighbors. And um, I don't know, let's say you live on a, on a nice estate and you've got a swimming pool and you've just moved in to the house and you know you start to know a few people and what have you not and you've been in there six months and your swimming pool needs cleaning because it's, it's spring, summer's coming. What do you do? You talk to your neighbours, okay? And, and they say, well, have you tried David? And so you've got this um, all, almost internal referral and recommendation scheme that, that's going off as well, which is pretty cool and pretty crazy at the same time. And that is how you really start to, the, the basics of growing uh, a business. Now, the, I will warn you, that is not the be all and the end all. Far, far from it. There are so many things that you need to look at, you need to discuss, So, such as pricing, um, creating a package, um, getting it out there in the right environment, knowing how to pitch it, knowing how to work with your clients, knowing how to convert them into your business and even before all of that you need to know whether your goals are aligned with the business with that you want and you think right okay is this a business or is it going to be a job you need to be asking those questions to yourself right now do i want a business or do i want a job now if you want a job fine it means that you don't get paid when you don't work and it also means that there'll be times when you are working and you're not getting paid. For example, when you're doing all the admin and the sales and marketing and customer relationship and all that sort of stuff. A job, you only get paid for when you work. If you want that, fine, that's great. And you can make a nice little coaching model and you can work with me. And you know, I've seen the reason why you can't earn $100,000 a year um, just, as a, just as a job. But then you might be thinking to yourself, is that what I really want? How many hours a week do I want to work? Because a coach that does 10 hours coaching a week probably is working three to four hours more than that. Not 13 or 14 hours, but for what every one hour they coach, they're probably doing three to four hours in the background. So if you're doing 10 hours coaching, you're probably doing 30 to 40 hours in your business overall, whether that's relationship management, uh, admin sales, marketing, going on stage, preparing stuff, uh, preparing new material, um, just, doing a few free calls and stuff like that, it all really mounts up. Or if you look, or if you want to be in a position of where, you know what, I do 20 hours, that's it, I'm not doing anything else, I'm gonna concentrate on my life and my lifestyle, we've got one life, and I want this coaching group, um, I want my coaching practice um, to empower people so they can have great lives themselves, but I want to be the embodiment of that where I don't do any more than 20 hours, so I can spend time in my house, I can spend time and building the lifestyle I want and being with my kids and being with my husband or wife or, or what have you not. If that's you, then perhaps you need to start looking at, um, at building a business. And actually what we do to start building a business, the best time to do that is actually before you've got any clients. That sounds crazy. Um, a lot of people think, and they, I'll put my hands up, you think wrongly. 
or well, what I'll do is I'll get 20 clients in and then I've got too many, so I'll bring somebody along and I'll outsource those clients uh, 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 to that person and I'll make a cut. That sounds great. Yeah, that sounds really easy. Yeah, I'll do that. But it has massive, massive problems because um, and right from the very beginning, people are buying into David Poole. Okay, if they're buying into David Poole and you're trying to pass them on to, I don't know, somebody called Sarah or somebody called Simon, all of a sudden, it's not the same. Because they're buying into you and your message and who you are, but then they're being presented with somebody else. Now, this can work great with software, for example. Um, it can work great with airlines. Like Richard Branson, for example, a lot of people went onto Virgin, uh, Virgin Atlantic because of Richard Branson. Is he gonna be flying the plane? No. Is he gonna come around and pass the coffee to you? No, he's not. And people know that. But what you're doing in, in your coaching practice is you're offering a real life, one-to-one -one coaching experience. So when it comes to scaling your business, you ideally, it's easier if you start to think about that actually before you go out there and get coaching clients because it is a whole different ball game. Right, I've said more than I was going to say. <laughs> I'm 26 minutes in. Now if you're still here, please, and I hope you are, click the link uh, below uh, to join the group. I know that you'll love it. It is really, really cool. At the moment, it's the beginning of February uh, 2020. We've just got over 500, 550 members in there or something like that. Put yourself in and um, partake, enjoy it. The world is your oyster. Right, I'm gonna wrap up. If you, want to subs subs if you want to subscribe to the channel, you are more than welcome to do so. I'll see you soon, thanks for watching.